Yeah, um, this is our webinar, webinar series number four uh, on COVID, where we're dealing with issues of our local economy here in Baltimore County. Um, I'm Will Anderson, the Director of Economic and Workforce Development. We're putting these programs on with our County Executive, Johnny Oshevsky, to cover what's happening as we're in COVID, what's happening as we're going out, and we've been tackling different topics. Today is very specific. It's about helping people find successful new career directions coming out of COVID. And this is work that we've long done, but it's work that is really essential during and as we come out of COVID. So the way we will um, be doing the program today is um, Ken Executive will be making some opening remarks. We'll frame a discussion. We have a series of questions coming in from our audience and we'll address those with our panel. So what I'd like to do very quickly is just to introduce our panel to folks, and then we'll come back for Q&A uh, after the county executive makes his remarks. Um, but I'll point out to folks that if you have questions, you can put them in the chat, or you can, put, you can send them to an email address, which is businesshelp at baltimorecountymd.gov. That's businesshelp at Baltimore County MD .gov, and there is a real person on the other end of that line. That's Todd Dolben. He's fielding questions now. I see them coming in already. So with that, let me introduce our panel and just say hello very briefly to you all, and then we'll begin. Um, first, we have Rose Fish, who is the Regional Business Solutions Consultant at our partner at the State of Maryland uh, Department of Labor. Uh, how are you, Rose? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you, Will? Good, good. Thank you for joining. Uh, we also have uh, from our own County Department of Economic and Workforce Development, our Talent Management Coordinator, Leighton McFall. Leighton, how are you? So well, Will. Good afternoon. Thanks. Um, from McCormick and Company, we have Edna Manood, who is the America's Talent and Acquisition Director. Hello, Edna. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Will. Thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. <laughs> We have Matt Ayers from GBMC Healthcare, who is the Director of Talent Acquisition. Hey, Matt. We have Matt on mute. Hi, Will. Thanks for having me. Great. And we have uh, and we have Kenya Taylor, who is the owner of Express Employment Professionals. Kenya, thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks so much for having me, Will. Great. We we really appreciate you all coming and the county executive making time to join this panel as he has for each of our panels, because as you know, we have a very complicated situation going on in the county and part of what the county executive doing, is doing right now is focusing on reopening and uh, doing that safely and putting people back to work. So this is really timely and we appreciate our county executive giving us a few minutes to, to kick off with this important topic. So with that, I'd like County Executive Johnny Oshevsky to make a few remarks, and then we'll we'll jump in with our panel. So, Mr. County Executive. Very good. Thank you, Will, and thanks to all of our panelists for being part of today's webinar. Uh, I want to thank everyone for, for listening in or watching today. Uh, I want people to know that in Baltimore County, um, we know that uh, COVID-19 has been devastating from both a health perspective as well as an economic development perspective. We've had over 6,000 people um, suffer with the virus. We've had, unfortunately, over 300 people have succumbed to it. Um, but we also know there's been deep economic challenges associated with it. Um, and we, we recognize that just in the, in the first three weeks in Maryland, the pandemic, we've seen as many people um, join the unemployment rolls as we saw through the entirety of the Great Recession. So uh, we in Baltimore County are trying to step up and meet the need wherever it exists, uh, whether it's over 2 million individual meals distributed, um, or having Will and his team uh, be there to support both our businesses to get back on their feet, but also help um, our residents both access uh, things like unemployment benefits, but also get reconnected to work. Um, so we're very proud of the work that we're doing. We want you to know that we're here for you as a resource um, and that we, you know, the, the role of government is to, is to serve you and to be a partner. So I want to thank all of our partners who are panelists. Um, I think you have some really hope, hopefully some helpful information today. And uh, if there's anything we can do in county government, please let us know. Uh, we're here to work alongside you and serve you. And I want to just thank everybody again for uh, being with us this, this time, this moment, and know that we stand with you and uh, we'll always do whatever we can to help. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Mr. Ken Executive. I know you have to jump um, and, and can't stay with us, but we really appreciate what you're doing. And uh, we appreciate you putting this forum together. So thank you very much. I'll thank jump. You. 
Thanks. I'll jump into, uh, I'll ask each of our panelists to, to give their perspective um, individually, but I wanna frame a couple things. I mean, when we think about where we are, so today's June 8th and things move really fast here, here in COVID, but we have 100,000 people who've joined the ranks of unemployment just during COVID in, the, in these three months. Um, and our team, Leighton will, will tell you and, and other folks that are running this meeting is really, really hard. Um, it, it's been very, very difficult on those families, those individuals. The state has had a ton going on, as Rose will tell you, to try to handle that tide of, of incoming. Um, and the question is, so we're at 10.8% unemployment right now, crazy number. Um, in the U.S., we're at 14.7%. But just last week, the, the, the U.S. revised that number downward for the first time in COVID. So so from 14.7 down to 13.3. And that may be a signal that we have peaked on the on the unemployment and the, and really the disaster of what's been going on in jobs. There may be light at the end of the tunnel right now. And I think our topic today will really point to that because of what's up, what's actually happening. So where are we today and where are we headed? Uh, where do we go from here? What you heard from the county executive is he's focusing on public safety, but he's also focusing on opening. He's been opening businesses as rapidly as he can. He's already gotten the county caught up to all of the, the governor's executive orders on reopening with an intention of trying to stay there as we move on to the next phases that include restaurants and health clubs and malls and, and, and all the places that remain closed. Um, so he's working hard in that regard. But if you're somebody who's been affected and is trying to navigate your career in this space, what do you do now? What do you do tomorrow and how do you get yourself moving? That's really the nature um, of, of today's topic. So I really appreciate this panel that our team put together um, to, to really dive in. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of start at the, um, at the larger level. And um, Rose, if you don't mind, let's start with you representing the state and Department of Labor. Um, you know, you've got a very snazzy title, but I'd love to know what actually, what's your role for, for folks who are watching now or watching this later on, on YouTube? What is your role at at the state and, and what can you tell us about the local jobs picture right now as we start to move out of the shutdown? Okay, thank you, Will. I do have a snazzy title, thank you. <laughs> um, I am the Regional Business Solutions Consultant for Baltimore County and Baltimore City. Um, uh, basically, that entails uh, a lot. Um, I work with I work with the local area business reps, um, like your team, like uh, Layton, Lauren, and Katie, um, as well as partner agencies um, and employers to educate them about the programs and services available to uh, businesses in Maryland and Baltimore, of course, county um, specifically regarding workforce recruiting. Um, training and upskilling their employees, um, avoiding layoffs and responding when um, downsizing happens and those types of things. Um, and what was the other part of your question? <laughs> oh, as far as um, moving forward in the workforce, uh, we've definitely seen a, a, a slowdown in, in the layoffs, of course. I'm hoping that we're near the end of that and we're definitely seeing um, it, uh, businesses that are starting to reopen slowly, but surely um, we're keeping our eye on the market, which I think we're going to talk about that a little later. So I don't want to go too in depth with that, but um, we are keeping a close eye on the market to see which industries are going to emerge as the hottest ones on the other side of this. Okay, uh, and and I know because we work with your team, uh, and and you're you're working on putting people to work constantly, constantly, not just during COVID here. Um, I'm thinking about somebody who might be watching right now who is, you know, thinking about their career. They, they're, they're, they're not in a position to, to go back to school, but maybe they need some training and a paycheck to, to get going. And it makes me think of the kind of stuff you do at the state with apprenticeship programs. And I wonder if you could, if you could drill into that one as a, just a specific example so people can kind of see some of the options they may not have thought of. Absolutely. Sure. So um, the industries that we're really seeing that are, are um, leading the way as far as right now are construction, of course. Um, uh, we're seeing that projects are being moved up because there have been less uh, less traffic on the roads and less people in the buildings. So it's made it easier for um, the, the workers to get in there and really do what they need to do. 
um, manufacturing. I know we have a um, representative from McCormick, so we should probably go more into um, what's entailed with that, as well as healthcare. Uh, we have a representative for healthcare as well. Another industry we're seeing that's growing is warehousing, logistics, transportation, mm -hmm. and IT. Um, all of those industries that I mentioned have apprenticeship opportunities available, um, as you mentioned. So if you, you're looking to make a change into maybe you you don't have a job to go back to, unfortunately, we're hearing that some people, uh, their job has been eliminated or their employer isn't able to reopen yet and they need a job, um, you know, the, not to go into unemployment, but um, that that extra money that we're getting, um, some of us are earning through the federal pandemic unemployment insurance isn't um, going to last past July, excuse me, of this year. So um, it's smart to be proactive. Now, if you're looking to move into a different industry, one of those that I just mentioned would be a good one to look into because they have um, high growth. Um, they are hiring and as I mentioned, they have apprenticeship opportunities. So what an apprenticeship or a registered apprenticeship is, um, is an opportunity to have a job you're hired on as a full time employee, um, but you're not required to have a whole lot of experience or background. It's understood that um, most applicants have at least a high school diploma or a GED and have to be at least 18 years of age or older. Um, you're hired on as an apprentice. You're paired up with a journey worker, which is a fully trained, um, you know, credentialed or certified worker who is um, skilled in, and uh, able to train the apprentice on, uh, as we call it, on the job training. Mm -hmm. So the apprentice is paid while they're learning on the job, but they're also attending school like um, community college or um, I'm not going to go too deep into it because it can get very, it's very flexible how we can set up apprenticeship programs, but there's a school component, which a lot of times is, um, can be enti entirely or nearly entirely debt free, um, sponsored by either the employer or a, an organization, um, a sponsor organization through apprenticeship. But um, it's a great way to get a, a college credential or certification debt free while having a job and starting at a, a reduced rate of the full, uh, what we call the journey worker rate, and then you move up, um, the apprentice moves up as their skill level increases. So they're attending classes, they're um, working on the job with their journey worker and um, getting hands-on experience. So that's kind of supplementing what they're learning in the classroom, all the while getting paid, all the while not creating um, student loans, college debt, um, and then, increasing their wages as they learn and, and grow their skill set. Um, Great. And it's, it's, it's such a good option for people to be aware of when they're trying to process all the all the options. You can find folks can find more about the Maryland apprenticeships at at labor site. You could find it at, at our website, which is baltimorecountybusiness.com. Um, but we'll we'll share all these links with folks. So I think that was a, a great, perfect example that people can stretch their thinking right now, Rose. <laughs> okay. You know, because maybe people aren't thinking about apprenticeships right now. They're just thinking about the basics. And yet apprenticeships can really help not have money going out the door, money coming in while you're getting trained. So that's that was a tremendous example. Thank you for, for pointing that out. I want to jump over to, to my colleague, Leighton McFall, about that from... You know, Leighton and, and his team, Rose, you mentioned the team that works with businesses and employers and does a lot of recruitment, putting people together. Leighton, I know, you know, some of the stuff you guys have been working on over the past year were growth industries, right? Like healthcare was growing, distribution tech were growing. When you look right now, for, for people who are you're talking to right now in a career switch, what are you seeing on the industry side in terms of here's where the growth is, or for, or for the next year or two. Yep. Thanks, Will. Um, interesting enough, as Rose mentioned, she touched on a lot of those industries that are actually looking for, that are actually, uh, that we're seeing a lot of growth in right now. Um, uh, transportation, distribution, warehouse, logistics, um, healthcare, construction, um, manufacturing and technology, those are um, most of the ones that we see as those that are getting the most traffic right now. In mm -hmm. addition, um, businesses that are reaching out to us for assistance and support kind of fall within those uh, particular industries. Okay, I think 
I want to give some examples to people because um, I know you, you've got a job board going. I'm going to pull that job board up right now to just show people real live what's happening. I'm going to jump the gun a little bit for Edna because Edna and McCormick are hiring. Some of their stuff is there. So is Matt's at GBMC. But maybe if you could describe some examples for people while I, I share my screen and pull up this resource for people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So some of the businesses that we're partnering partnering with right now um, that we know are actually that are doing um, uh, a number of hiring for a, di a number of different positions. Um, one is uh, Potomac Photonics, which is located in Catonsville. They are a digital and micro fabrication manufacturing company, and they are actually looking for an entry level position right now that is uh, an entry level operator. Um, interesting enough. Um, as Rose was kind of touching on on the job training, this particular position is entry level for someone who may be just passionate about getting into a manufacturing type job. Um, and this one is more of an advanced manufacturing where they have uh, on the job training and uh, growth opportunities within that organization. Um, interesting enough, just one thing I want to touch on with uh, Potomac Photonics. Um, during COVID-19, they've provided support um, and they've dedicated some of their equipment and materials to help provide uh, needed PPE in our local area, which I think was a great, great thing for this company. Um, another company that's doing a lot of hiring for a bunch of different positions, and as you can see right now, um, is Grandson. We'll have yeah. it right up there. Grandson yeah. has 17 plus different positions that are available um, right now in the construction industry, they do site development um, and they work as a site development contractor. So, um, you know, feel free to take a look at those different opportunities as well. Um, Curio Wellness is another business that we're working with right now. They're um, in the Timonium area and they are they actually manufacture um, safe uh, and reliable healthcare products. They are. Um, medicinal um, cannabis um, organization and um, they are looking for quality assurance technicians and also packaging associates right now and um, we actually did a virtual um, recruitment with them a couple of days ago um, so we're trying to adapt in the times of not being able to do traditional job fairs and career events face to face so virtual has kind of become the new um, way to be able to be effective in assisting and supporting our um, businesses that are looking and recruiting and to uh, be able to provide that type of support for them. That's that's tremendous. I know we just touched on a few and I didn't even get I didn't get through the whole list, but for folks who are looking, that's at the Baltimore County uh, website. So it's at baltimorecountymd.gov slash job board and I know is, I know you guys are updating that thing all the time uh, and there's a lot in there besides just what people might think about which is healthcare just thinking about COVID but there's it's a broader a broader set um, so I think um, I'd like to ask you to add one more thing Leighton about the other side of the work that we do so you you work closely with the employers getting them connected to these big recruitments mm -hmm. But we also have a, a lot of people that we serve in our on our career side and our workforce side. So if you can just quickly tell people what we're still doing there for the people who are looking for career services right now. Absolutely. Well, so, so we have three uh, career centers in Baltimore County. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, are actually closed. However, we do still have uh, the staff that is able to support everyone virtually. So, so, the, um, so the, the buildings are closed, but the service is open. Correct. The buildings okay. are closed, but our services are open and ready to go. So for anyone who needs support um, in the areas of job searching, resume development, if you're just looking to help master your interviewing skills, um, just needing a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our career consultants, you can actually reach out um, by dialing our, um, our, eight, our uh, 410 um, 887-8000, you can leave a message and, and they will get back to you to schedule an appointment with you, or you can actually, or you can email our talent works at baltimorecountymd.gov email address, 
and you can actually request um, uh, services through that link through, through that option as well. So we are open for business, and if you do need support and assistance, even if you just have other questions, that TalentWorks uh, email address um, is also available for additional questions as well. Thanks, Leighton. I mean, we've got a whole team of career counselors that are helping people with resumes and LinkedIn profiles and interviews and how do I, you know, what do I do next? So the team is right there and, and we really want people to keep leaning on them. So thank, thank you, Leighton. Um, there are some questions coming in that I might throw at you in a minute here, but I want to kind of get through, uh, talk to some of the rest of our panel and, and focus a little bit on healthcare. And I think I'll turn to Matt um, next at GDMC. Um, you know, healthcare has been a number one industry for Baltimore County for, for a long time, and it continues to be pre-COVID. Um, but now COVID has thrown e even our hospitals into this emergency response mode. So just just starting right there, Matt, how are you and your GBMC colleagues doing on the, on the front lines of, of COVID? Sure. Um, you know, it's interesting because this is a, a new thing for healthcare. Typically, when the economy contracts, healthcare is always the stable one. You know, but when it's a pandemic, you know, it's really has thrown a munch, monkey wrench into things. Um, you know, we're reopening just like everybody else is. Um, you know, all healthcare organizations across the area have really seen a dip in services. You know, in their volumes as patients stayed home to stay safe. But now, as the economy is reopening, uh, especially with the return of elective surgeries. You know, our volumes are starting to pick back up and of course we need we're a service level industry so we need those folks to be on the ground and our, and our frontline workers to be able to provide those services so as our volumes increase so does the amount of recruiting that we need to do and that is picking up quickly okay and is that is that on the um, i know you have to hire people on the clinical side the the, the nurses the aides and, and then you also have all the administrative and running the buildings are you hiring on on one side or the other side or both? Sure, all, all sides of it, all, all points of, you know, of that affect pa that patient care. So of course we're always hiring for those clinical folks and the, the, the nurses, the medical assistants, so on and so forth. We did that all the way through the COVID uh, pandemic, um, but also on, you know, the entry, what I would call like our entry level roles. You know, we have a great need for, um, healthcare organizations across the area have need for um, our, our housekeeping, our food nutrition folks, you know, those are, those are heroes. And we can't do uh, the patient care and, and provide for our community unless we have those folks. And, and those roles really represent a great opportunity to kind of break into healthcare um, and access things like tuition reimbursement. And, and you know, if that's if somebody maybe had an encounter with COVID and a loved one was sick, well, they themselves got sick and they really uh, find a calling in their heart, that altruistic side to be part of healthcare and something bigger and giving back, that's a great way to maybe take a situation that might not be great right now for them economically, move into uh, you know another industry, and then be able to grow and develop in, into something greater uh, as they move on. Into the new well, we're we're getting questions, Matt, about about that. I mean, I know you hire for a broad range of positions and types, but when you're when you're looking at a hiring decision at, at GBMC, or really, frankly, for any of the hospitals. Can you describe for people that are that are thinking about it what that what that hiring process might look like right now because it's a little different to be in an online scenario. Absolutely, that's a great question, and it is. Um, you know, all the health organizations had to kind of uh, you know pivot rapidly to the change in, in the environment, and that included moving to a, a larger online or virtual presence. Um, and here at GBMC, we weren't any different. Um, you know, right now we still have a no visitor policy, so the only people in the building are patients or employees. So what that means for the hiring process is, you know, you go on to, what you, you can access any of our open positions on our, our career page. If you're interested in meet the qualifications, you can apply, recruiter would reach out to you. If you're selected for an interview, uh, that, would norm, that would be virtual. So it's going to be on like a Zoom platform, a Skype platform, it could be on your iPhone, FaceTime. There's any number of platforms you can use, but it is different. You know, it feels different. It's not the same as sitting in front of someone uh, face to face and getting that kind of dialogue. Um, and, you know, but the decision still can be made. We still have to hire. We're going to vet folks uh, according to that work and how they present uh, and what their experience looks like. And if they have transferable skills, especially if they're from an outside industry, 
Uh, and then we would walk through the offer process, uh, negotiation, and, and hire uh, in, in that same virtual environment until day one of orientation. Okay, a little bit different for most of us to go through all that, but I know people are buying houses and cars and, and, and everything without being on site. Uh, so, so I think, you know, people need to play around with Zoom with their families and friends and, and, and get comfortable so that when they're sitting across from a Matt Ayers, they're more comfortable in this as if we were, you know, right in the same room together. I agree. In fact, if I can make a recommendation, that would be the one thing is I would practice with a family. You know, if you're doing Zoom meetings, most people are on doing Zoom or something like that now. Practice with somebody. They can pretend to be the hiring manager because you'll get more used to that that feeling of seeing your picture in the lower corner and so on and yeah. so forth, uh, and and be better when you present. Right. Thanks, Matt. I'd, I'd like to shift from healthcare over to manufacturing. And, um, you know, we're lucky to have McCormick here in, in Hunt Valley in Greater Baltimore. And, and Ed Manude runs the America's Talent Group at McCormick. So, Edna, thanks for, thanks for joining. You guys are a big presence here, but you're actually a big presence around the world. Um, what, from what's going on at McCormick and your industry overall? Um, I know people are at home. They're cooking a lot more. Yeah, they're, using exactly. your, they're using your products. I'm using your products. A yes. lot more. But what can you tell us about the, the, the situation from the jobs perspective at McCormick right. and your industry? So we're part of the essential food supply chain, right? So um, COVID has impacted us uh, two different ways for the food industry, right? So if we talk about restaurants and offline food chains, right, they have seen like a dip, right? There are some restaurants that have closed um, and some that have decreased their services, right? So that took a dip. However, on the other side, packaged food has seen an upsurge, right? So to your point, a lot of people started cooking at home, so they're buying more of our products. And then for instance, um, chips and pretzels had a, like 186% growth and we supply the flavor to those chips, right? So our company has been doing well on that side. So there's been an increase in demand for our products, which means an increase in, in talent needs. So as you know, as you said earlier, a lot of our jobs are posted right now. We are hiring. Um, our plans continue to manufacture and we've actually increased the number of lines across all the sites mm -hmm. uh, pretty much in the United States. So um, there is a large need. So a lot of opportunities within um, the McCormick organization. What, what, what kind of stuff are you hiring for right now that, that a, a general audience would be interested in? So across the board, right? So around, in the, if we're gonna speak about the Baltimore area, um, for professional roles, we have about 40 positions available um, across finance, supply chain, HR, you know, all the different functions, just, you know, check our website, mccormick.com slash careers. But more than that, we have a lot of opportunities in our plans and our distribution center. Right now in, in your website, there is about 80 non-exempt openings, I, I believe that we have posted. A lot of them are um, already there. However, on Friday, I was advised that we're gonna hire about 150 more for Hunt wow. Valley plant alone. So that um, gonna bring total positions in the next two months that we'll hire for Maryland alone would be about close to 300 roles, um, specifically for the plants and the distribution centers. So those openings would be like production technicians, maintenance, distribution, warehouse technicians, a lot of those openings. So um, depending on your experience, the entry level would be um, a high school diploma requirement, um, ability to lift like 50 pounds, um, forklift experience is a plus for our distribution center. So, um, there's a lot of opportunities, and of course, with if you have experience from manufacturing, that's going to be a plus as well. It's so it's so nice to hear you and Matt talking about big numbers <laughs> of hiring people when, you know, for three months we've just been really taking a beating trying to help people who are on going in the other direction. So l let me just ask you one other thing before I jump to uh, is about when you talked about the plant and you talked about your workers and the. Um, what kind of adaptations have you made at McCormick to keep the workforce safe and, and, and healthy and following the CDC guidelines? Yeah, so as an organization, McCormick values health 
um, safety and well-being of our employees. So that's you know that always on top of the list for our CEO. And um, one of the things that we make sure to provide is flexibility, right? Because a lot of people are in very different situations now, right? For if you have dependents, so we're very flexible around that, and that's part of the reason why we're hiring more people, right? So it's giving the opportunity for people to that need to stay home to stay home. Um, in the let me add that in the corporate office, you know, as uh, Matt was saying earlier, everyone works from home. Everything is virtual now. We gave people that didn't have laptops before laptops so they can continue to work from home. But in the plants, because you have to be there, of course, we have to practice social distancing. And that means for some of the plants, for instance, if you're on an eight hour shift, we'll end it an hour early, seven hours, so that there's no overlap with the next shift, which they used to have. So to practice that social distancing, you get you still get paid for your eight hours, right? But um, the, the shift was changed to seven hours in some plants. Everyone is provided with a mask, of course, and all the PPE that they need um, to work safely. And then, of course, there's um, a premium pay um, of $2 per hour um, for all the people that have had to go to the plants to help continue the, our, our ability to produce um, and meet the needs of the businesses that we support. Fantastic. So, um, so you're hiring a lot of people. There's yes. There's a lot of safety built into it. There's some incentives built into it. So fantastic. Um, I want to, and and you, both you and Matt represent large employers, two, two of the larger employers in the county. I'd like to switch over to, you know, we have a ton of small businesses. We have 21,000 small businesses just in our county. Um, I'd like to jump over to Kenya Taylor, uh, who, who owns and operates Express Employment Professionals, which is a, a recruitment firm. And I know Kenya, you, your organization covers a wide range of um, of fields like industrial and office and skilled trades. So you you're kind of the perfect person to ask the the big question, the question du jour of who is hiring now. And and we'd love for you to name names so that folks who are watching know exactly where they can where they can be looking. So could you jump in with that general question? Sure. Um, you're right, Bill. We cover a gambit in the industry. We cover everything from light industrial, manufacturing, construction, to office support. Um, and I'm having, you know, engineering firms that are in Baltimore City on the smaller scale reaching out to me for administrative officers who know how to do contracting specialists. Um, I'm also having, um, you know, smaller to mid-size corporations such as Double Envelope reaching out to me for manufacturing, um, forklift operators, warehouse operators. Um, they're just looking for flexibility. Um, and I think that's something that kind of is gonna carry over for many positions is that flexibility. You may be hired to be a forklift operator, but if they need you to help out in some of the other departments, they wanna be able to call on you for that. So that is something that I'm hearing coming out of this. Um, additionally, I have a bookkeeper for a small consulting firm in Timonium that they're looking for. They're um, a little bit in the consulting online space, but they are looking for bookkeepers. So I'm, I'm having people from all walks of life reach out to me. I even had someone who owns a liquor store reach out to me the other day. Um, I think they're in Whitehall. Um, yeah. And so they are looking for stockers and you know, people that can help out in the store. And I think, you know, people, as we come back to work, people will decide, am I coming back to work? Uh, people people who've maybe been on the bubble about, am I ready to retire? Um, and now, yes, I am. And now suddenly there's another job opening that there wasn't pre-COVID. So some of that may shake out and come into professional recruiting firms like like you. When And, and you work with, uh, between both businesses and and job seekers, like somewhere between in a sports analogy, the the coach or the scout. Um, so what what kind of good advice would you give to the job seeker, the job applicant side, um, so that they can be more successful? Sure, um, I will say to be open. Uh, as you heard here today, there are a lot of positions out there, and I, I know that we're all struggling and. We're all facing a lot of difficulties right now, but just be open. 
I've had positions since the beginning of COVID, um, and many of them have gone unfilled. Um, and I know everyone does not want to work in a pandemic, and those are the conversations that I have to have now. Are you okay with working in a pandemic? Are you okay with interviewing in a pandemic? Because our interview process has moved online, and we started actually doing that before COVID. It was something that we were trying out as an organization as a whole, uh, where we kind of switched over to telephone interviews because we know that there are barriers in transportation. People have difficulty getting to interviews, so we wanted to remove that. So it's just been amplified with COVID. But at the same time, um, as some of the other panelists have mentioned, and you've mentioned, Rob, some of those positions may or may not be coming back. And if they are coming back, then they may be on a part-time scale. Okay. So um, I, I would just encourage everyone to be open, um, continue to look in different avenues, network with your inner circle, as well as those outside. We send our job postings to a number of different churches every single week, just so we can reach the public and let them know that we're here. And these are the positions that we have available. I, I, I want to ask you one other question, and then I want to, we're getting questions from our, our, our audience that I want to bring back to you. But the question I wanted to ask you is, do, are people making common mistakes? Because I know when you said you, you've been doing the interviews online for a while, and, and, and Matt was giving some tips for how to, how to get comfortable, are there, are there killer mistakes people are making at this point that you could help them not make in, in the job application process, particularly as it's online? Sure. Um, a couple of things. Uh, I know it's challenging to say this, um, but whenever we call someone and we call people, we try to call people between eight to five. Um, if we receive your resume, however, sometimes we do call people after hours and people will answer the phone and they may not answer the phone in the best way. Uh, so that will screen you out in our process. We do have a process that we go through that you have to successfully pass through in order to work with us. And if that first interaction with you is maybe um, a little off-putting, uh, then you may not move forward in the process. So we are seeing that quite frequently. And I, I know people are looking for jobs and people are, are you know a little upset and have their own personal things they have going through, but we are seeing that. Um, okay. The other thing I would say is uh, maybe asking questions, have, have some questions prepared for us, um, because we are going to ask you questions, but we love to see that interaction so that we can speak on your behalf when you're not there about your enthusiasm, um, some questions that you gave us that were very enlightened. We like to be able to pass that on to our clients as well. Okay. Uh, let me, I want to ask you a specific question. James has asked a question uh, as an IT professional. So are, are any of your companies hiring in the IT space? Uh, let me, and if I could start with you, but I could, we could kind of round Robin around the panel. Can you, are you seeing IT hiring right now? I am. I am. It just depends on the level that he's looking for. I've had um, an organization reach out in Hunt Valley and they are looking for entry level IT. Okay. Got it. Well, we can connect people to your site um, for them to, to find it. And of course, we're posting stuff on our jobs board. Any of our other panelists um, hiring in the IT space right now? We are hiring to Formic. We have some IT openings, but I guess the question is what you know what the experience is Specifically. so yes you can check our website we do have some openings right now okay i want to jump to thank you all for making your your remarks i want to there's a couple questions that have come in that i'd like to i think i'm going to put these two first questions over to rose um and and anyone can jump in but um they're really about specific populations that are looking for for employment like for example ex-offenders um, or folks with a disability. And sometimes folks don't even know that there's resources for them as somebody with a special need uh, or special situation trying to trying to enter or, or, or make a move in the in the market. What would uh, Rose, what would you say on that one about um, ex offenders or, or folks with disabilities? 
and I apologize. I don't know if you even noticed, but I lost connection, but I'm, I'm back. So You're I hope back. I didn't miss anything. You're back. <laughs> yes, I would encourage you to connect with, um, Leighton mentioned our American Job Centers. <clears throat> and even though, as he mentioned, the buildings are physically closed due to COVID right now, our services are still fully available virtually. Uh, we do have, uh, they're called re-entry navigators, which are individuals that work with job seekers and businesses um, to encourage uh, that partnership. So in other words, they work with um, job seekers who are either nearing release from incarceration or have recently been released or maybe not even recently, maybe they have things on their background or you know other re-entry related um, like uh, issues. They also work, the navigators uh, also work with businesses to encourage, uh, to teach them one about the benefits of hiring these individuals and some of the other benefits like tax incentives and things like that. Um, so I would encourage those individuals and the same thing with individuals with disabilities. Uh, our American Job Centers also partner with the Division of Rehabilitation Services. We call them DORS affectionately, D-O-R-S. Um, and again, just like the reentry navigators, we have doors um, counselors who work with job seekers who have disabilities that are a barrier to employment. So um, those individuals are trained specifically to work and with individuals with those barriers and help them overcome them. Terrific. Um, and other questions coming in related to uh, Remarcus is asking about jobs uh, for veterans. So, so Leighton, we have, uh, we've got resources at the Job Centers for Veterans specifically, do we not? We do, we do. And as a matter of fact, um, uh, we have uh, veteran representatives that actually support our veteran population and they are um, uh, available also through our um, career centers. And um, if you need to be connected to one, all you need to do is just reach out to our um, our direct number or either our email address, and we will be able to connect you to a veteran representative who will be able to support you with any veteran related services. Terrific. And I see people are call people are asking about very specific jobs about in, in human resources and, and administrative. I think uh, our whole panel expressed there's a lot of openings out there and uh, there, there's probably going to be a lot more in six months as people are, are finding their way back. So I'd really encourage people to, to go to these job boards. I was just looking at, um, even on LinkedIn, um, I'm looking at their article about getting back to work. They've got a laundry list of what's going on in our region. There's a job fair uh, with the universities for the Maryland Career Cons consortium coming up next week so there's a lot going it's time for people to to get out there um and I, I know we're coming up on time i'm looking through the questions to see if there's broad questions that we haven't um addressed i don't see any so what i'd like to do is is go through the panel and ask if anybody would like to add a piece um to theirs i think i need to pull up the powerpoint so we can show people some links to where folks can find this information. But uh, Rose, did you wanna make any uh, closing statements from the from the state? Yes, oh, yes, am I on? Yeah, I'm unmuted, okay. <laughs> yes, thank you, Will. Um, so again, back not to focus all about apprenticeship, but it is a great way to transition into a new um, industry and, and as well as not necessarily start from the bottom, but um, see a way to progress up. Um, as far as apprenticeship is concerned, we found uh, stats from US Department of Labor. They released a survey showing that 94% of all apprentices are still with the same employer a year after they finish their apprenticeship. So there's also a high retention rate as well for, um, for the business side. So it's job security, um, which is something that we're, I think a lot of us are looking for during these times. Um, they talk about uh, recession proof, not that any industry is recession proof, but um, apprenticeship leads to a highly skilled occupation that is is more secure, I should say, during these times. Um, so definitely look into it. Um, you mentioned our uh, the website for Maryland Apprenticeship. We do have a Maryland Apprenticeship locator. Um, you can actually Google it and pull up the majority of the sponsors that we have in the state of Maryland. Um, to see what industries, um, job titles, it even shows you the starting rate as an apprentice, like what you would start um, 
earning as an hourly wage. So I would encourage you to check that out. And please okay. let me or Leighton or anyone on this call know if you have more questions, we'll get you in contact with someone that can help you explore that. Great. I'm going to put your link up at uh, at the end, Rose. And you're, you're reminding me there's some really innovative apprenticeships out there. One of them is called Retrain America right now that, that a company in the area, Catalyte, is doing that is taking people with some ability in IT, paying for them to go through training, paying to get them into a job and putting them in these careers as code, coders in Retrain America. So you guys are doing a lot. There's there's The market is doing some innovative stuff. Um, so we'll add that link. Leighton, is there any final remarks you wanted to make as we as we close out the panel? Yes, I would like to make one uh, additional comment just to kind of reiterate. I know that a lot of job seekers are probably feeling very overwhelmed with not with just COVID alone and being at home. And there's just a lot of changes that are going on right now. Um, please feel please know that there are resources out there and support for you. Um, our career centers. Yes, again, we're we're not open to the public right now, but our staff is available. They're just a phone call or an email away. So I, I would just really encourage you, if you need some comfort, some support, and just feel more comfortable with the whole navigating the employment uh, scope there, please feel free to reach out to us uh, via email or um, on our line there. And I believe we're going to have that at the, at the end as well. Yeah, thanks, Leighton. Um, Matt, any concluding remarks from, from you and GBMC? Just again to say it's a great opportunity to, it's a great time now for folks that are displaced with parallel skill sets to, to join the healthcare industry. Uh, you know, whether it's a telephone operator or a cashier working at one of our shops or uh, environmental services, you know, people with great customer service, uh, that's really what we're looking for is, and it supports our values as we um, help our patients. And, that goes a long ways, you know, and then that that opens the door to future opportunities, whether they might be if they want to be a nurse that we can support them in their education uh, through that. And I, I can tell you, we have people that have worked here for 50 years and they started out in environmental services and they're a nurse practitioner now. I mean, they, they've lived that story. So it happens. I've seen it uh, and it's, it's the right opportunity uh, for those folks now. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, Edna and, and McCormick, any, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Yes, thank you for this opportunity again. Wanted you know um, to invite everyone to check out our, our career site. McCorm, as you know, has been in Baltimore for 131 years, right? And we continue to grow 30 some plus years of continued profits and dividends for our shareholders. We value our people and would like to invite you to you know check out our opportunities um, to become part of our our fat the McCormick family. If I may add, Will also a, t a tip. Um, for all those people that are looking for opportunities out there. I always tell people to to tweak your resume, right? Because there's um, a lot of AI technology out there now, and that's what does the screening of all the resumes, right? So you can't use the same resume for all the different jobs. It increases your chances if you tweak it to match what the job is looking for, assuming, of course, you have those skills, right? So in your summary or overview in the top, make sure you sell yourself. That's your opportunity. It's the quick thing um, where a recruiter, if it's a manual process, sees right away what you're bringing into the to the role. And for AI, it's a, a chance for the matchup, right, of the skills and qualifications that are that the AI is looking for for jo that job uh, against what you're bringing to that opportunity. So have a basic resume and then tweak it depending on what that role is looking for. I think that increases your opportunity to get to the next level, which would be a, a phone or a Skype interview. Great, thank you. I know. So much of uh, who gets that interview is based on networking these days. So it's a great time for people to spend time to read a couple articles on how to activate your network, how to turn people into ambassadors for you so that it's not just a blind application to when there's a lot of people applying for it. So, and tweaking your resume toward it is a great tip. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to end with Kenya. Um, any final thoughts, Kenya? We we do have people asking uh, in the chat box very specifically for your email address or your web address, if you could include that for people. Sure. Thank you so much for having me this afternoon, Will. Um, my email address is my name, Kenya, K-E-N-Y-A, dot Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, at expresspros, P-R-O-S, dot com. 
and they can feel free to email me their resume. I look at resumes all day long, every day, every day. So um, I, I will definitely take a look at it and see how we can help you. Additionally, um, Express has been around for 35 years. We have 825 offices. So feel free to send me your resume. If I do not have anything that's readily available that matches your skill set, I will share it with our neighboring offices. And we have 10 strategically placed in Maryland. Um, a few tidbits that I will leave you with is the fact that I know it's challenging right now and looking for a job is going to be like looking for a job. Um, it's, it's going to be a job within itself. Um, but we're here as a resource to help you. We always want to help the community um, any way that we can. I do have positions that are available and um, I'm looking forward to helping you any way that I can. Terrific. Thanks, Kenya. I'm, I am going to share my screen as we uh, close out here because I, I do have some of the links up here. Let me uh, get up to it. Um, a couple of general links um, are this Baltimore County business.com is really where we have all of our resources in the county. I know McCormick is at McCormick.com and, and, and GBMC, the big ones you can find. Kenya provided, provided hers. Uh, but here's the link to some specific pieces inside Maryland's Department of Labor that Rose was talking about. Um, you can also go, if you're still dealing with unemployment issues, you can also go to mdunemployment.com. Um, but we're trying to keep all of our stuff in the county in one easy place to remember, baltimorecountybusiness.com. And it links to all of our COVID stuff, uh, but also our non-COVID stuff. We continue to make loans to businesses and, and help uh, do small business counseling as well. So those are our resources. Um, we really appreciate everyone on this panel jumping in and spending the day with us. And for all of our guests that were out there, thanks to the team. Uh, running this meeting, the County Executive Wyshevsky joining us, um, Courtney running the the tech in the background, and Jessica and Todd and Ellen for putting things all together here. So I, I love how the optimism that you ended with Kenya and that we have people that are really hiring and people like Lauren and Rose who are actually helping connect. There is an opportunity out there, not easy, but um, there are opportunities out there. So we're we're encouraged that we have so many good employers in Baltimore County. We thank you all and we look forward to seeing you at our, our next webinar. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Thank you. Bye.